Hello? Hello? Is this YouTuber and board game reviewer extraordinaire, Philly Dips? Yeah, this is he. Oh, thank God. I've been trying to reach you for hours. How'd you get this number? I bought it on the internet. Listen, people need more board game reviews. They have gone without one for, for months. I don't have time to make a review right now. I'm, I'm on holiday. Holiday? What are you doing on vacation? Where, where are you? I'm in Atlantis, like the Atlantis, like like the lost Atlantis paradise. It's really awesome. Atlantis? No, you need to leave now. Atlantis is they call it the sinking paradise. It'll it'll plunge into the ocean before you know it. You'll be surrounded by water and drown in gallons and gallons of, of hydrogen based liquid. It's fine, man. Well, well, what's the worst that could happen? Again, and thank you for tuning in to another review. Uh, I just escaped a, a, a massacre at the Atlantis Resort after it sank into the water uh, two days after the grand opening of the resort. Uh, I should have taken the warnings. I should have read the signs, but I, but I didn't. But I escaped. Uh, and after after hiking, boating, and swimming my way back to safety, you can imagine that the first thing that I wanted to do was not greet my family or my friends, not tell tell my peers that I was okay, but it was to review a board game that is eerily similar to what I just experienced. So without further ado, let's get started reviewing Survive Escape from Atlantis. First things first, this game has a nice big huge box, which is always good for, you know, storage, I guess. And as you can see here, this is the 30th edition of the game. Which means it's a reprint from a very long time ago, meaning it's got to be good. Uh, the manual is, you know, it's it's something. It's you know, it's a manual, does its job well, which is always good. And just look at the size of this of this nice huge quad fold board. You got plenty of space here, you know, for shenaniganery. And of course, you know, of course, guest starring in this game are tiles, tiles everywhere. More tiles, more tiles. Your tiles tonight will be coming in three flavors, flavors of mountains, forests, and deserts, and they all sort of, you know, mesh together into this glorious island. On a more serious note, I want to point out that I got some misprinted tiles, and I, uh, Stronghold Games refused to give them, like, the real ones to me. They just kind of said, no, that we are going to send them to you, so... So your friends will be si sitting around the table as you, you know, you put your, your hex hexagons around the island, as you place down your little helpless looking meeples like so as your boats are being readied for an evacuation and they'll be wondering what's going on here the goal of survive escape from atlantis here on survive is to get your meeples to the boats or in, just into the water and escape to the mainland there they will be safe from all harm and they will watch as you know everyone else struggles to get to the beaches and it's quite selfish because, you know, you're only going for your, for your little family of red or whatever it may be, and not really including anybody else. So let's see how it works. On your turn, you're going to get a total of three actions, and these actions can be used for all sorts of purposes. Uh, two. You can, you can spend an action to move one of your guys around either on the, the island or into a boat or from the boat to the island. Or, you can move a boat. Now, if the boat is empty, anyone can move it. Otherwise, the player with the most people in the boat... The player with the most people in the boat has control over the boat. So you can already imagine in your head what sort of deviations could happen as you sort of rescue your people. And, you know, maybe you'll prioritize your own yellow guys and leave the red guys behind as you sort of taxi them back and forth. But there's much more to your turn than this. When you're done moving your three actions, three, <laughs> hi, hello, you will then remove a tile of your choosing. Now, there are certain rules for this. You have to start with the sand tiles, then the forest tiles, then the rock tiles. And how you choose to remove must be touching water. 
But even more excitement, on the back of it, there is an, a, an item. Or, you know, a, 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 it's a thing, an event. It could either be, if it's green, like, if it's green, then that happens immediately. So, for, for example, here, a, a new boat just appeared, and that's awesome. That means you can, you know, you can board more people onto your boat, but it's also not awesome because, you know, people can, you know, if you rightfully claim this boat because you uncover the tile, people can just immediately embark the boat and begin to sail away. Or it can be a red one, and you get to keep this. It's a special ability that you can use later. Now, as you are, you know, taking your guys in your boats and sort of sailing along, having a nice sort of, you know, beach boating trip, you might find yourself wondering, what's the threat here? I mean, we're we're getting guys into boats, we're moving them along, and we're taxiing the boats back and forth. Where's the danger? But some of the more keen out of you may have noticed these guys. These are sea monsters. And while they're bad news on their own, you've also got sharks and boats to deal with. After choosing a tile to sink, you will then roll the creature die. It will determine what you get to move. So I rolled the shark. That means I get to roll a shark. Check the reference here on the board, which is very nice. Move the shark zero to two spaces. So we got a shark here. Zero to two spaces. Let's move him two. Uh-oh, he's in the same place as them. Uh, everyone in the same spot as a shark dies. It's evil. Whales, who are more of, you know, annoyances than threats, they move three faces and they can just destroy boats. Leaving, you can imagine, like, leaving just this one guy stranded out here, desperate for help, because swimmers can only move one space per turn, and it's going to be a forever to either get back to the island or back to safety. But the island might sink anyway, so it's really, he's kind of in a pickle there. Maybe your friend will come rescue him, or maybe maybe they won't. Oh, and the sea monsters are the most fun because they, although they only move one space, they destroy everything. So if you got you know a nice boat here, you know it's full of full of passengers ready to make their way home. You know tell their wives they're okay. You know he'll come along and just destroy them all, and then that that's it. They're done. Thanks for playing. So you can you can imagine in the chaos of you know the game. It might go from looking like this to something more like this. And it's going to be quite quite a nuisance, you know? It was once, you know, this orderly island, and now take a look. Players in boats at sea arguing which way to go. Should we go to the shark, which is more a little less dangerous, but or the sea monster. Players, you know, in boats swimming through these, these channels that have, we, have, we have now built under the sinking island, trying to, you know, pick up some last few survivors before they, they head back to shore. Players who are just being dumped into the sea as this island slowly erodes, and look, they found a new boat. Oh, no, they're gonna grab it. These thoughts are gonna go away now. It's, it's, it's chaos. Now, there's one more rule you might be wondering about. What's the point of, you know, maybe going for these guys and maybe leaving the guys behind? Why, why don't we just go for these guys who are all bunched up together and leaving one person behind? It's because of this. Take a look onto your meeples. You will see they have different numbers. Some of them are ones. Some of them are threes. And so the idea is, at the end of the game, how many meeples you have rescued. The end of the game, of course, is signaled by a volcano destroying everybody in the surrounding ocean. When the game ends, how many, like, the, t the total number of numbers you have on your meeples at the end of the game, it's how many points you have. And then whoever has the most points wins because it's not about, because, you know, it's not about, you know, getting saved and, you know, having everyone live. It's about, it's about capitalism, really. It's, uh, but does that make it a, an evil game? Not really. No, it's more of a... It's a family game, actually. It's the game of the imagination. You, it makes you think about what's going on. It's a, it's a theater of the mind kind of thing. Yeah, in your mind's eye, you can see, you know, a group of survivors hiking through the forest, trying to find their way back to the beach, where there might be one last boat waiting for them. Maybe, you know, people are heading, heading like, they're out in the middle of the ocean, they're heading towards land, and a whale comes and just screws them over, and it's, it's they're... Do they swim back to the island, or do they swim to shore? It's then there's a shark there. It's just, it's very cinematic actually. I, I like games that are cinematic because you know you they make you sort of like think about like how how cool like this movie is going on in your dining room table is happening. And of course you just get to you know eat people. And when is that not fun? And as you can see by the fading sunlight and the fact that I'm in my pajamas, I've been talking about this game for so long that the uh, hours are beginning to fade. 
But let's, before I give it a hearty recommendation, let's go over a few more important key things about Survivor's Game from Atlantis. So, first of all, play with four players. This game is honestly the best with four players. There's, you know, two players, two players and three players, they work, but four is just optimal. It just gives it sort of like, you know, that interplayer tension of like trying, of scrambling for boats and stuff. It's, it's, it's glorious. Uh, another thing, this game, this game, I, I'd say it's a good family game. I played it with my younger sisters before, and they they enjoyed it, with the, and they don't really enjoy games that much, but, you know, they, they thought it was, I'd say it's a good family game, but also good for, uh, good for, you know, like, you know, regular gamers as well, and, uh, yeah, all in all, it's, it's, it's a very good thematic game, and, you know, the theme isn't too heavy, aside from, like, you know, you're in Atlantis, but... It gives you like enough sort of theme that you can you can think you can imagine it in your head what's going on, but you know like not too little theme that you don't know what's going on. But other than that, yeah, you know, I recommend pick it up. It's uh, on Amazon at your local game store, wherever it may be. Link in the description. Actually, I'll, I I can do that now. I might put I'll, I'll put I'll put the right there actually. It's, yeah. Good night, kids, and happy sailing and drowning.